it smells delicious. Greetings. Welcome back to Pink Oddbird. Today I am starting my day off <laughs> with you all by opening a little box of Happy Mail that I got from one of my good, good friends. Some chocolate that she sent me and I've been eating healthy so I can, the smell of all this chocolate is just like, um, overwhelming. <laughs> so it couldn't have come at a better time because January has been interesting and just borderline, um, unkind almost. <laughs> so I really, I'm just, I need a piece of chocolate. Chocolate and salt is like the best thing ever. But I feel like I do need to see what's in here. <laughs> Chocolates are called Johnson's Chocolates. This is Nuts and Chews. Home Cooked Goodness. It definitely does taste as such. Oh, look how cute. <laughs> Johnson Candy. It's uh, Tacoma. So this came from Washington, by the way. Decisions, decisions. I'm going to go with this one right here. <laughs> Thank you to my friend. You know who you are. So very grateful for that. More than you know. All right. So, chocolate aside, what I am here to do today is I have received a package from Chocola and it hasn't been opened yet. So, we're going to crack this open and see what's inside. They asked me if I would be open to reviewing their product. So, I don't know what they're sending me. We are going to see it together for the first time, so. All right. So it looks like they have sent me the Chocola watercolor pad with the watercolor brush pens. Cool. They are an Amazon-based company, and I have not used this product before, but um, they did send this to me, so it is sponsored by them. And we're going to just use these today to work inside of my journal that I am using for Odd Flock, or yeah, for Odd Flock 2020, which is um, where we are putting together our prompts for 2020, for Prompt Week 2020. So you guys might remember this book. I've used it a couple times. Uh, when I was doing the ASMR videos. So I decided that even though there's a couple pages in here from that, I'm going to go ahead and use this as my book for prompt week. And I will be sharing my pages at the end of the month. And, and that's also going to be the same time at which I give you all the new prompts for the following month. So don't forget if you aren't already, um, join in and have fun with us. It's just seven prompts a month. And you can find the list of prompts on my website and I'll have all the information linked down below. So the prompt for day three, which is what I am on today, is do you plan to travel this year? If so, where? So we're going to, I think I want to use these watercolor brushes oops, as like a background. The packaging is really nice. I do like that they come in like a really like sturdy kind of plastic so that way it keeps it all together in one place, which for me makes it really easy, easy to store for storage reasons. So, all right, so here is the color range. You can see that it goes from like yellows to greens, blues, purple, pink, orange, red, brown, gray, and black. So you get all the colors of the rainbow and then some. It also comes with a little um, watercolor, a water brush. So this is how you're able to basically just like move your watercolors and such around on the page. And then there's also a Chocola watercolor pad. So this is just a little uh, paper pad that has 15 sheets of watercolor that is 200 pounds. So I'm gonna 
use this today for today's spread. Um, do you plan to travel this year? And if so, where? So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, so before I actually get started doing this in my journal, I want to try the paper pad that Chocola has sent just so that I can get an idea of how these watercolors actually work and what they're like before I put them in my journal and also so that you guys can see how it's, uh, how it's meant to be used um, with the intended products. So I'm just going to start with, I had to clean my printer you guys because it seems to be printing kind of weird lately so <laughs> I'm trying to fix it. You'll see that in a second here, what I printed out, and I'm, an, I'm too annoyed with it to reprint, so it is what it is. I need to add a little bit of water. I do have one of these already, but just to be um, fair and square, I'm going to kick it off with theirs. So it's just a twist off, and then I'm just going to fill this up with water. I am not the master uh, <laughs> watercolor person. However, I have been trying to practice lately because... Uh, my friend Janine also has sent me some watercolors recently, so I'm excited to see how these also work. So let's bring it down a little so you guys can get a better view. All right, so here we are with the watercolor paper. Now let's get some water. So you squeeze. It has little divots here where you squeeze. And I'm just going to get the water right out on the paper. You can peel this off and tape it down to a different surface, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna do it this way. So there's a little water out now. Let me bring the colors over. Okay. So all I'm gonna do is start playing with some of these colors and see how they kind of like react. So maybe, yeah, well, the green one is kind of out already, so let's start with that one. Oh, very nice. Okay, so instantly, since I have water down on the paper, it's already kind of like starting to move. So I've got a little color out there. You can see it really is pigmented. Then I'm just gonna take my brush and start moving this color around a little bit more. It's moving around like watercolors should. And I'm lightly squeezing this so that uh, bits of water can come out here and there. Now, I would like this piece here. It seems like it kind of settled in. I don't know if it was dry there or um, if it just kind of soaks into the paper there, but I would like that to have a little bit more mobility. So let's move over a little and we'll try blending, but I'm gonna squeeze some more water out on the paper. And I'm gonna grab this color here. They do have a, um, a website, on, or they do have a YouTube channel also. So you are able to go over to the Chocola YouTube channel and actually see how they use their products firsthand. They have demonstrations and tutorials of the different ways that you can use their products. So that is another option. Okay. Okay, so I mean... Although where I put water, it seems like the pigment didn't really, it didn't really want to get in there. So let me try it with maybe a darker color in, in the area where I, yeah, okay. So that seems, that seems to be a little bit more, there we go. It's also probably that I don't know what I'm doing completely. Like I said, I'm still learning as far as the watercolors go. Priscilla had also sent me um, some cool like watercolor brushes and stuff. So I think it'd be fun. You don't have to stick to this brush. You can use other brushes. You don't have to stick to this paper. You can use other watercolor paper as well. So I just like to get a really good bit of pigment down and then just move that around with the brush and the water and just kind of blend it. So basically what I'm just creating here is like a background. I do, I do want to say that it does kind of like set in wherever you put it down. So you can still see here in this area where I had put that green down and here it is kind of set in there, but it does have mobility. 
I might be getting it too wet, but it's, it's working. So I'm adding the pigment here off to the side where I don't have any water yet. So I want to see how that reacts differently as opposed to putting it down on an already um, watered area. Okay, well that doesn't seem to move a lot. I feel like when it gets, um, when you get in there and it has water underneath it already, that's, see that didn't move around at all. And actually, before I go on, they may have a different type of demo for these on their, on their YouTube channel, but I didn't want to be biased. Um, I want to come out and use these, but they may have a different proper way that you can use these as well. So they are soft and real brush tips, watercolor effect, 26 colors, kids safe, water-based, washable ink, non-toxic. Chocola.com based in Miami, Florida. Okay, so this little piece here isn't moving. So I wanna try again with just more water down and see how it'll react with um, water. Okay, I think this just is gonna be kind of like a learning curve, you know, cause I think every watercolor is probably a little different as far as the reactions are gonna go. And I do like the way some of these move around really nicely. This one for some reason didn't, and I know I didn't have water underneath that when I put that down, but like I said, I'm not an expert, but watercolors, I believe you should be able to put water down first, or you can put the pigment down and then you can um, move the color around with water afterwards. I do believe it's supposed to work both ways, but if, if you know, definitely leave me a comment down below and let me know. And also, like I said, check out the chocola.com um, website or their YouTube channel here on YouTube. They also have offered to give some of these markers away to a lucky winner. So if you're interested in winning a, an item from the Chocola product line, definitely check out the description box below and, and see what the specifications are for the giveaway for Chocola. And then you can follow those instructions and be entered to win something from Chocola. So this is how they kind of are acting as far as watercolor goes. Um, I do like this water brush, it's pretty nice. Now I would like to see kind of how they act if you use it as like a, like a marker, like an actual brush pen. And I know that side is still wet, but that's okay. But I need that side because I'm left-handed. So I'm gonna try and pick one of these colors here. Why don't we go with a pink maybe and see how it works when it's just plain old writing. I'm not an expert at hand lettering yet either. <laughs> but I don't feel like this is what they're truly intended for. So kind of once it's down, I think that's what happened here. I put this on a dry surface and you can see the pigment doesn't move. And that could be the paper or that could just be the way the markers work. Uh, once it's there, it's not moving. I kind of almost want to try it with my own watercolor paper just quickly just to see so I'm gonna set this aside and grab my watercolor paper and then we will move on into the journal okay so I have just torn a piece off here of my own watercolor paper and I do automatically like right off the bat see some differences differences in the paper mine is 140 pound and I it's um uh, I can't remember the name. I, I want to say Canon, but I don't feel like that's right. It's the blue, the blue um, cold pressed watercolor paper. So um, I have this turquoise one here. So I want to put, see, it's a really light. I felt
felt like it was just more pigmented though. Okay, there we go. So there's some of that turquoise there. I haven't added any water to this paper yet. And this is a good test because if you have your own watercolor paper, then you might just want to use your paper and then, you know, you can use these markers. Okay, so that is a big difference. So I'm starting to think that before it was just the paper. You can see how much that pigment moved around and the paper was completely dry. Now when I did that over here on this paper, that's what happened in a dry area. So ultimately, I think that's just gonna boil down to the paper, which is not a big deal. I'm happy with the way the pigment is reacting on um, a different piece of watercolor paper. So I wanna try adding a little, there's a lot of that pigment. There's a lot of that pigment, because <laughs> this is just the water brush. So let's try and get some of that out. You can rinse these off, and I'm gonna dab it off on a napkin. So I want to try it now with a little water like we did on the other paper. So there's some water out. And let's try, you can try this green. So you do get a little bit of pigment here but I feel like it almost works better when the brush, yeah, you see the pigment is now showing up. Okay, so maybe that's the way these brushes work. So I'm going to try that again, this time on a dry area. Lots of pigment here, very nice. and then move it around. Okay, yeah. So that, and you see how we just figure that out? It's just a learning curve. Um, and this is different than the other watercolor supplies that I have, you know, so, um, but I do like the way that they move around once you, you know, get the water in there, the color turns out really pretty. And I do like this. So n now that I know how you have to use these because you can see this and this is an example of the brushes without any water underneath the pigment. And then you put the water over it. And then here is the water first and then pigment second. So big difference. And the other factor is um, the paper. <clears throat> so while I do like the way this one looks, I do feel like it reacts a little bit better on this paper. So I'm gonna try and get some of that water off <laughs> so I can try one more color. And now, now that I know how these work, I feel like I would be okay using these in my journal. Oh yes. And you can see I'm able to even blend those. That color just moves right on around. So I'm very, very, very much happy with how this looks. I'm not getting any like harsh stains anywhere in here when I move this pigment around. Um, I, I love that. This is nice. It'll be also interesting because the paper in my journal is actually coffee stained paper. So <laughs> could be a totally different reaction here. I'm gonna move it, move you up a little. So we are on coffee stained paper here. So the reaction could be completely different. So we're trying it out on three different papers here. We've tried the chalk Ola paper. We have tried the paper that I use for my watercolor. And now we're gonna try adding just a little in here for pops of color on my journal spread for day number three. So first, I think what I'm gonna do is get my images down and, and then I'll add some color around the images. So I'm gonna start out with this one. 
So like I said, definitely check out the description box below for all of the rules for the giveaway for these Chalk Ola markers. There is a big array of choices of different things that you can get. Their ratings are really good on Amazon. And if you decide to just pop over to Amazon directly, you can use the coupon code that I have provided for you in the description box below, which will save you a little bit of money on these if you want to kick it off and, and give these a try. I just printed some images out and uh, like I told you guys, my printer was tripping. So I'm a little bit annoyed at that. Like this was supposed to be a vintage postcard of New Orleans. So that got ruined. This here I put for Tennessee because I would like to go there this year and visit one of my good friends, really good friends. And New Orleans because with that same friend hopefully later on in the year I will be getting to go there with her so I'm just gonna pop this down okay and another place here you can probably guess just by seeing it's a really pretty picture I love Washington though um, I wouldn't even mind living there because of how much it rains. Like, that's my favorite thing ever, ever on earth. Okay, so, eh, we'll just put this, maybe, maybe, we'll put it right here. Yeah. Why not? So, if you guys, like I said, haven't checked out these prompts, definitely, um, Hop in with us and check out what everyone else is doing by checking out the hashtag oddflock2020. And we're just getting started. And there are only seven prompts per month. So, you know, it's, um, it's not going to be totally inundated with that hashtag uh, right off the bat anyway. So now that I've got these little images down, I'm going to get some background colors down. So... Tennessee, I feel like I want to use brown. I don't know why, but I want to use brown for Tennessee. So here we go. We're going to start out with the pigment, and I'm just going to start putting, and I'm going to go a little bit onto this cardstock. This is just regular 65-pound cardstock. And try moving this pigment around on the... Okay, so you see, it it's definitely going to boil down to the paper. So it doesn't really want to move very much on the coffee stained paper. On the cardstock though, it seems to move a little bit. Wow. Okay. So not so much on the coffee stained paper. So I wouldn't recommend these for coffee stained paper. As you can see, it did move around a little bit more when we got into the cardstock. But I think ultimately these do work best on a really good quality watercolor paper. But we're gonna keep going. New Orleans, I feel like I wanna use like turquoise. I don't know, that kind of reminds me of like Fat Tuesday or something. And since I know that it's gonna give me that kind of like stuck into the page pigment, I'm going to use these brushes in a different way. Instead of using them with water, I'm going to use them in a way where I know that the pigment is going to go into the paper and this is going to stay. So there's a little doodling for Seattle. Since we have that nice sunset, we will go in with the orange. And again, I already know how this is going to react. So I'm just going to give myself a nice orange border here. It does feel like you're painting though, even when you use this like without water, it kind of feels like you're painting. And I do have a little bit of a uh, cardstock here. Maybe I want to glue this little scrap down somewhere like this up here, maybe. Postage paid, that's cute. <laughs> I'm going to stick that down. So like I said, this journal is just really something fun for the year that I'll be using for prompt week. 
and as you can see I'm just having fun in it everything is really casual all of the spreads that I have done uh, in this book have taken me maybe about 10 minutes so far um, for prompt week I'm just keeping it really simple and just giving myself something you know to keep my mind busy with and there's a couple of ladies who've already started their prompt week so definitely check out the hashtag on Facebook YouTube and Instagram and I think the last thing I'll do is just write a little blurb about these places and where I plan to go this year and this page will be done All right, so page spread is done. And like I said, I will be going over that in detail with all of you at the end of the month when I give you the next prompts. So don't forget, Chalk Ola is hosting a giveaway by way of my channel. And if you would like to enter, definitely check out the description box below where all of the information for how to enter is, is uh, provided to you. And... I hope that you all have had fun experimenting and learning with me today. Also, if you would just like to pick these up or any of the other Chocola products, there's a discount code in the description box below that you can use when you purchase from Chocola on Amazon. So I definitely want to say Chocola for giving me the opportunity to have fun and play with these watercolor markers. I'm definitely looking forward to getting into this some more and trying to expand my watercolor um, Forte, I guess. <laughs> and um, yeah, so definitely uh, thank you. A big thanks to Chocola and a big thanks to all of you for hanging out with me here today. And that is going to wrap it up for me for now. Be sure to stay tuned because you never know what direction this odd flock of ours is heading into. And until next time, toodaloo.